Welcome to Arts and Props with GL. Hi, I'm Gail. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use circle templates that you can purchase at the Dollar Tree to make this lovely ornament. Also, I'd like to show you how you can use material to create your own trimming. Here are a list of materials to make the fabric ball itself. These are the templates that you can purchase at the Dollar Tree. They range from two to 10 inches. We're gonna be using the two inch and the three inch templates. I like to label mine and I'll show you how to add the crosshairs in a minute. Here's material that you can purchase at Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby. Just pay attention to what the license says on the side so this is meant to be used in the home only. Also you need a pencil, a pen, a permanent marker, fabric scissors, craft scissors, a professional hot knife, a three inch foam ball. I use scotch masking tape to rest the ball inside so something to rest the ball inside. A pipe cleaner or a flexible measuring tape tape that you can use to help line up your lines on the ball. Consider a tucking tool such as an X-Acto knife or wooden skewer. You can also use a quill needle or a tool specifically designed for tucking material as well. And the templates that you can download from this video below. We will be using a three inch sphere divided into fourths template. You can find a list of these materials and links to these products in our description below. To make the template, divide the two inch and three inch templates into quarters. I like to center and tape down my templates before drawing the crosshairs. Find a straight edge, place it on top of the printed out fabric ornament template, then make your crosshairs. You could also use different color markers and finish the whole template by marking it into fourths, sixths, and eighths if you choose. Next, cut out the three inch sphere, divide it into one fourths template. Here's how to use your templates to design your foam ball. Start by making a dot in the middle of those circles on the polar ends of the ball. Next, you're gonna line up the hemisphere of the circle with the cup or the tape that you're using to hold it in place, and you wanna make sure that it's parallel. Next, we're putting the template on top of the ball, and you're looking at the lines on the side there, and you're gonna look over it, looking down, and mark those crosshairs on the ball. Now it's time to connect the dots. Grab your flexible piece of paper, tape measure, or pipe cleaner, and you're gonna align it to the top and bottom dots with one of the dots in the center. So you're attaching the top dot, the middle dot, and the bottom dot together, and then drawing a line. Repeat the vertical lines three more times so that you have a total of four quarters. Using the plastic two inch circle template, we are going to align that with the vertical and horizontal lines on the ball in order to create our four circles which is where our images will eventually go. I discovered that using this cutout plastic template works much better than using a paper template. Line up the crosshairs on the ball with the crosshairs on the template and then I recommend drawing about a quarter at a time then you have more control with the template. Also notice how I have my thumb and finger out to the sides a little bit so I can hold it down when I'm drawing it. And you can see that I drew a little bit more than one quarter at a time here and it was later that I discovered that drawing a quarter at a time is a lot easier. When we add our background material, what we'll do is cut it off in the center so it will be easier to attach to the ball. Now it's time to heat up the hot knife and have some fun. When you're cutting into the foam ball, you want to make sure that you are cutting at least a quarter inch deep so you can tuck in the material. Also, you want to do a quarter at a time and pull the knife out right away so that way it doesn't burn into the ball and create a wider edge. So notice how I'm doing a quarter at a time. I have more control over it this way and it's much easier to control the hot knife. To help create a smooth line, always focus on the line in front of your incision and keep your knife as vertical as possible. I'm making sure that I'm not cutting any lines inside the circles. I just have to say I love this hot knife and it only costs about $20 to purchase it. I thought it would be hard to use at the beginning, but then I found it to be much easier and faster than using a regular X-Acto knife. After I cut out all the circles, I will begin cutting the crosshairs on the top and bottom of the ball. One thing you may want to do is cut the horizontal lines between the circles as well. I forgot to do this at this stage. We are moving on to cutting out the material. 
After you pick out the material that you want to use in the background, it's a good idea to iron it. Any wrinkles that are there will show up in your design. Next, we're going to take the quarter sphere template and you're going to trace around it on your material four times. If you want, you can use more than one color and then you can divide it the way that you want. Also, once I trace this with the marker, now I'm estimating and drawing a line through the center so that I can have eight equal parts. The reason why I'm doing this is so it's easier to tuck it into the ball. Originally, I thought I would use two different materials and then I came back and cut out two more of these in the red material so it wouldn't conflict with the design itself. Now I'll just cut them out and set them to the side. When choosing images for the circle part of the ornament, it's a great idea to take the two inch template with you so you can line it up and make sure the image is going to fit. I will actually be cutting out pepper four times for this ornament. Now that I know that the two inch image will fit, I'm going to be switching to the three inch template because I need to make sure that there's enough material to tuck inside the circle. And since the three inch is a little big, I don't need a half inch on each side. I'm going to be drawing a line inside a little bit to kind of think about maybe a quarter inch in so that I have a quarter inch to tuck in. So we're thinking about like a two and a half inch circle versus a three inch circle. I will demonstrate this process. You can use a pencil or a pen if you don't want to use a permanent marker, but if you do use a marker, make sure it's permanent so it does not smear your image. Now that I've traced the circle, I am adding the crosshairs so that it will be easy to align with the crosshairs on the ornament. When beginning the smaller circle inside the template, I still want it to be close to the edge. I would rather it be a little bit bigger than a quarter inch all the way around than too small. When working with lettering, make sure that you have that lined up the way you want with your crosshairs as well. And I know I'm going to lose part of the P and the R once I tuck it in. However, I still think you're going to be able to read it. Now I'm cutting out the four dogs. Because the dogs or the images are so important, these will be the first four material pieces that I will tuck inside the ornament. Tucking the material means that I'm going to be shoving the extra material on the sides down into the crevices so that the material holds so I don't have to use glue or sew the ornament. At this point, I have another material that I forgot to mention. You might want to wear a glove to make sure that your hands are safe while using the X-Acto knife and the skewer. Before adding the material, now's a good time to check over the ball and see if one side looks better than the other. Choose which one you want to be the top and which one you want to be the bottom. Now we're going to take the material, line that little dot on the edges up with the crosshairs on the ball. And if you have words or something in there, make sure everything's going to fit. And then when you start to take a skewer or the X-Acto knife, slightly tuck in the edges a little bit and make sure that it's going to line up completely before pushing it all the way in. And even after that, even after you get everything lined up the way you want, it's a great idea to lightly tuck in the material first before tucking it all the way in because that will help avoid extra wrinkles and that will make it a lot easier in the long haul. When tucking in the material, do your best to get rid of all the wrinkles. Do a little bit at a time over on one side and then switch to the other side. Eventually you'll get there and most of the wrinkles will disappear. If for some reason you do have some wrinkles that you do not like, you can always pull the material out and start over again. I am done with the first part and now I'm ready to add the other material. Now it's time to add the background material. So I've lined it up with the top part of the ball and you can see I started to lightly tuck it in and I started to tuck in where the circles are. Now I'm trimming it so that way I can fit it in there. And after doing this with the first or second one, what you can do is figure out where you're going to cut that little section on the next one. So you can see that I'm starting to cut just a little bit on the sides there. So that way it'll be easier to find the circles so I can start to tuck it in. Although I'll probably still want to do a little bit more trimming as I go along. The rest of the background will be shown in fast time. If you see any of the black material that I was using, I did end up replacing it with the red material. To make your own fabric trim, Cut out two 24 inch pieces 
of one inch wide fabric of your choice that you would like to use as a trim. And then you can see the relays that's right in front that's on a roll. You definitely want it on a roll. You don't want it folded up because it won't work that way. I'm cutting off any bent ends. And what I'm gonna do is line up the relays on top of the fabric pieces right here and use a paper clip to clamp it down on both ends of my board, which is a cutting board that's 24 inches long. So you want your board to be 24 inches long, clamp it on one side, and then you wanna keep the relays as flat as you can going from one side to the next and it's okay if it's not completely flat the first time go on ahead and clamp it on there and then you can go back and fix it as you go along just like you see me doing here and it will take about two 24 inch pieces to do an entire ornament like I did however you may be using another trim too so you can see I'm doing this with both pieces and I'm using that relace and I'm making sure that it's flat so I went the flat side down all the way across and making sure that it is not twisting at all once you have everything down and it's nice and flat you're going to get out some Mod Podge it's okay if it's gloss or satin gloss might work a little bit better and all I'm doing is using a sponge brush and applying the Mod Podge to the relace and making sure that it gets underneath there and I'm applying the Mod Podge with my fingers as well to make sure the entire fabric is covered as well because we want that to get kind of stiff and then once it's stiff and once you let it dry for about 15 minutes you're going to fold it over and make sure that it's still flat on one side it's okay that it's not symmetrical when you fold it up the most important part is that it's flat on one side once it's flat let it dry completely and then you can trim it like you can see me trimming here now I needed to go back and trim this a little bit more you want it to be really close to the relays. I would say between 1 16th and 1 8th inch away from the relays, but you want it really thin, otherwise it's gonna be difficult to tuck inside the crevices because there's already material there. So you can see I'm cutting it down. Again, I would cut it down a little bit more thinner than this. Before I add the trimming, what I wanna do is cut it really thin and probably leave about an eighth of an inch away from where that plastic relace is. So that way I know it's gonna be really firm and easy to tuck into the crevices when I start to add it to the ornament. Here, I am dipping the end of the trimming into Mod Podge, so that way I can get ready to add it to the ornament. However, I would do this differently, and the reason why is because this left a little residue on the material, and I wouldn't want to show that. So I would use Fabri-Tac glue or something that dries clear so you don't have this problem. I'm starting at the bottom of the circle to add the trimming so that way all of the trimming ends at the bottom. You can see that I'm starting to take the knife and to tuck in the little leftover rough edges so that way we have a really clean edge at the top. And notice how the relays is on the vertical so that way it will create a nice circle. Notice how you're only seeing the side of the relays from the top versus the flat side. After I complete the trimming on the first circle, the rest of the trimming will be in fast time. Before building the bow, we want to make a simple template using a toilet paper roll. Flatten it like a pancake, cut the length down to two and a half inches, then take a marker and make a line in the center, which would be one and a quarter. You're drawing and cutting out a little section so that it's taller than the width of the ribbon so that you can fit the wire and ribbon in at the same time. When you thread the ribbon through, the ribbon should go the same direction that your ribbon's going through on the back side. So you're threading it through the back side, you're going to wrap it around three times past the thumb, and then you'll bring the wire down and 
tighten the ribbon and the wire as tight as you can go and pull it off then you can cut the rest of the ribbon off when you bring the wire down tighten and twist it at least three times on the front side then when you pull it off you want to tighten it even more and I take the wire over on the back side so that I can pull it tighter and then you can cut off the excess wire when pulling out the loops I do my best to start pulling them out from the inside and spreading them out and then I spread them out the opposite direction on the other side once I'm done spreading out the loops and fluffing them up I will check it out on top of the ornament and see how it looks for the center of the bow I'm cutting down my ribbon a little bit to make it thinner and I'm going to wrap it around because my ribbon will not fray if you have a ribbon that frays easily all you have to do is fold the sides of the ribbon in and you can kind of tack it down with glue and then you can wrap it around. Once I wrap it around, I'm gonna attack the glue on the back side with a hot glue gun, but I'm gonna use very, very little glue because I wanna be able to get a pin through it too, and I don't want it to dry on me too fast. For the hanger, I'm using an eighth inch wide ribbon, and I'm measuring about eight inches. I think in the future, I would use at least 10 inches for this part, just so I have more ribbon to work with. 10 to 12 inches would be ideal. And so I'm cutting it off, and I'm gonna hold both of the ends together. I'm gonna wrap it around my finger, and then pull the ends through to create the hanger itself. To attach the hanger to the top of the bow, take a straight pin with the ball head and stick it down between the knot on the hanger itself and then stick it through the bow down into the ornament. And if you need to, you could add a little extra glue too. In order to hide where the trimming meets, I'm using ball headed pins and placing at the top and the bottom of the circles and we'll just add a little extra character as well. Here's a fun way to add some embellishments. You can make them out of paper clay. You can see I have the silicone mold right here. We're gonna be using the smaller bone. We're using creative paper clay that you can buy at Michael's. And you could also use the DOS paper clay that you could find at other stores as well if you can't find creative paper clay. All you're gonna do is use a little bit of cornstarch and slightly brush inside the mold that you want to use and then you're just going to take a little bit of the clay you want to knead it back and forth in your hands quite a bit so that way it smooths out easily then take a little piece of clay so that you can push it down into the mold and you want to move the mold back and forth a little bit to make sure it gets down in all the crevices to clean off the top I like to take the back of my nail and smooth it over the back of the embellishment as well as the mold then turn it over and then you can pop out the embellishment. I made four of these to go around the pepper ornament. The last step is just to glue it on and you can use a clear glue such as fabric tack, a fabric glue. I recommend using that versus the Mod Podge although I use the Mod Podge and it does work. When gluing on the embellishments the clay should still be wet and this way it will form to the ball so you don't need to allow drying time between finishing making the molds and then applying them to the ornament this wraps up our tutorial and here's the final ornament we hope you enjoyed this video i got a little company right now um, and if you enjoyed this video we'd love to see you next time please subscribe thank you bye bye